Hi guys, I want to make a couple of very quick comments on a, a short video by Imran Hussein from Epistemics, this is what he calls his channel. And the, the video is, here's why Dawkins doesn't like God. I find this very silly right, right from the word go, because it's not about liking God, it's whether it makes sense whether there is any good reason to believe that a God exists, not whether you like something or not. I know that it's comforting for a lot of people. I know that a lot of people like God, want a God, need a God to get through the day. I understand that. But the question is not whether it's comfortable, but whether it is true. And here, this is a, a prime example of someone who really doesn't understand anything and just makes a very emotional appeal. Oh, he doesn't like my God. And therefore, and, and this is why he's trying to attack now uh, Professor Dawkins and what he stands for. And he makes some horrendous claims. I mean, there, there's no way that Professor Dawkins is somebody that I follow. I don't agree with everything that Professor Dawkins says. A lot of things I do agree with, and that is it. And we have to see this in perspective with every single person there is. So there's no thinking the way that a theist thinks that, that they're on, like at the top of the, the, the pile, there's this God. And then below that, you have a couple of prophets. So, so you have this hierarchy thinking, which I don't have. For me, somebody is either an expert, knows something about a topic, a specific topic, or not. And if somebody is an expert at something, then I respect that and that's it. But I wouldn't want somebody who can sprint 100 meters in 10 seconds to dictate to me now the law on abortions or something like that. So that doesn't work. What Imran does is, let me take the first statement, something that he says at the end, by the way, um, but, but this sort of sets the tone. You know, that science somehow can explain everything. He seems to have this misconception that science is this nebulous thing. It, it is not. It's just a tool. And, and just like you cannot really use a hammer to clean windows, you can't use science to explain everything. It, it's a matter of just looking at what science is there for. It, it is something developed by humans and there is a reason why it exists and why it works exceptionally well. And it's not that, I, I don't think that science explains everything, by no means. I don't understand why it has to always be this absolute claim. It's all the way this or all the way that. No, there's a gray area. Science explains that which is designed to explain, and that is natural phenomenon. And that's it. I don't understand why this is so difficult to understand. Really, I don't know why he does not grasp that. One of the reasons for him denying God uh, seems to be that, uh, you know, that somehow the belief in God undermines or would undermine science. Oh dear, there's a lot going on here. So if I look at the definition for deny, it, if I look in the Cambridge Dictionary, it says to say that something is not true. But the main thing is to not admit that you have knowledge, responsibility, feelings, etc. So to not admit something means that it's obviously there and you're just not admitting yourself to allow yourself to say, yeah, this is the case. So that is ridiculous. So you can only deny something that does exist. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to use the word deny. And the second thing, yes, if you believe a God exists, okay, if you are presupposing this God, then it undermines anything, any reliability that you put into the scientific method, into the results that you get, into the conclusions that you can draw from science. Because what you are doing is you're putting the conclusion first, instead of taking the steps necessary to put evidence after evidence after evidence together to form a hypothesis and then to actually go and show why this is correct and or, or even why not. But if you put a God in there, you're saying, no, what I see there must be correct. And now I'm going to look for evidence to support this conclusion that I have already drawn. And that doesn't work. And that is why Professor Dawkins does not agree with, the, with this, this approach of having a God first. So it's not that he doesn't like it. It's just that it does not make any sense.
Because if you presuppose it, you, and you, you then have to go and look at science and say, well, the conclusion that this and this happens must be wrong because it's against what um, this God says in this funny book that I am reading that I like so much, which is a thousand or two thousand or five thousand years old. Because it's so old and because it's scripture, you have special words and special vocabulary for all this, then it must be true, which, which is, is, is stupid. Or if you were trying to utilize science and use science, to try to explain the how and the why of how things came to be. No, that doesn't work. Science doesn't, doesn't look at, well, it does to a certain extent, but it, it doesn't, doesn't tell you why we have a, a, a blade of grass growing exactly in this way. It, it tells you how this happens. And in a lot of cases also the why, because there are sort of interconnections between the different components. And this is why we can, from this, deduce, yeah, this is why this happens. But in general, he's right. It's not about the why, it's about the how, because the why is not really interesting. You know, why, 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 why? Why is, why is the banana not straight? Well, what if, <laughs> there's no point in asking this question in my eyes. It's the how this works and how it actually fits into nature and how this makes sense to, from a certain perspective. That is what is interesting for me. The why, well, it's a nice to have if you can see that, but it's, it's not a necessity for me anyway. So, no, it, it's not a requirement that you have the why as well before it makes sense. Now, the funny thing is that the God explanation does not explain anything. It's just a set of claims. That is all unsubstantiated claims I might add. So there's no point in actually going and saying, well, God did everything, because that stops you from thinking. It stops you from finding out. It stops you from research. It just, it's a lazy approach. The intellectual laziness of a person to say, well, I'm, I'm, I couldn't be bothered finding out why the banana is not straight. I'll just take, well, God did it that way. Well, that is stopping any kind of you know, any kind of curiosity. You're no longer interested in finding out things, you just accept them. That's not the way that I work and that's not the way that Professor Dawkins works. Okay, obviously methodological naturalism suggests that you're limited to the physical, therefore you have to try and explain everything via physical causes. No, it's the opposite. He completely mixes uh, methodological naturalism with philosophical naturalism because philosophical naturalism excludes the possibility of non-natural causes. Methodological naturalism, however, does not. So I am somebody who says, look, I don't care if the evidence leads me towards a supernatural uh, cause or, or entity or whatever the case may be, then Yes, that is, that is where the evidence will, will take me and that is what it shows. Now, the, the funny thing is that as soon as we can uh, show this and demonstrate this, the supernatural becomes the natural, of course. So methodological naturalism is, in, in my eyes, the more realistic way because it doesn't exclude it. And this is why, if you look at the definition here, it's including the religious commitment. So in, in other words, it's the view that religious commitments have no relevance within science. So it totally excludes any belief, any, any kind of a judgment as to religious claims. If they are correct, if they make sense, if they can be substantiated, then so be it. It is not excluded. Whereas um, Imran here, he, he thinks it is. Well, Sorry, man. Uh, no, it is not. The belief in God undermines science in any way, shape or form. What we believe, or you know, our belief, is that God created everything. Yes, science undermines your religion. Because what you are doing is you're presupposing your God as the source of anything and everything, in command, in control, constantly fiddling and, and saying, okay, I want this, I want this, um, I want gravity to be like this, I now want the moon to be in this position and things like that. So th this is exactly what science is not. Science works in, in, totally different. Um, it's diagonally opposed. It's completely different. Um, it says anything that I can observe, anything that I can substantiate, anything that I can demonstrate, that, they, they are, that I can test, that I can detect, this is reality that I can describe. And th there is no definition for God. There is no way to detect God. And that is why the whole concept of God does not gel with 
science. The understanding that we live in an ordered universe that's been created by a high, higher power and uh, it's ordered. This is how he ends and, and it shows the problem right there. Because he says, well, there's a God, he's in control, he does everything and blah, blah, blah. And this is why we live in an ordered universe. Now, our universe is anything but ordered. He thinks that just because we have determined some, some constants, some, you know, some, some speeds and values for, um, for gravity, for, for different things, we have observed these things. We, we have not um, determined these, and yet he thinks his God has determined these, and therefore they must be ordered. Well, it's not. I mean, just take our planet. Our planet is wobbling through um, through space. It, it, it's not straight. It, it's changing all the time, and, and the, the shape of the planet is changing. The, the, the position is changing. Everything is, is changing. It, there's no um, real order. Even the orbit around the sun has a huge discrepancy. Um, we, we are being constantly bombarded by little bits and pieces that have been left over from exploding stars. And we are under constant threat of being um, totally eliminated out, out of the whole process here because everything is chaotic. We do not know when the next huge asteroid is going to hit Earth and totally destroy the entire planet. This can happen because it's a chaotic universe. So, I'm sorry guys, um, this does not make sense. I think this is, is rather primitive. I, th I think this is somebody who is stuck in this, um, this, this groove of, well, I need there to be a God, now how do I go and, and make sense of it? Which is the other way around that science goes, which, because science says, okay, I have this um, indication here, now let me see where it takes me if I can make some sense of it. So it's completely the other way around. So you can't say that Professor Dawkins does not like God, it's just it doesn't make any sense to believe that a God exists. I don't have any good reason to believe gods exist, so I don't. See you next time. Ciao for now.